Thanks for the opportunity to speak. Uh, as a fellow, it's been really exciting and a great uh, symposium to attend today. So I'm going to present a case of a 12 centimeter uh, type 5 thoracoabdominal aortic aneurysm that we did several weeks ago. Um, she was a 66 year old female. She was relatively functional, but she had severe COPD on home oxygen. Um, severe pulmonary hypertension with PA pressures in the 90s. Um, she also had a history of DVT with IVC filter. And she initially presented to the hospital with respiratory failure th uh, thought to be secondary to COVID. And on CAT scan was found to have a thoracal abdominal aneurysm that had grown five centimeters in size to 12 centimeters since 2019. So while she was on home oxygen, she was fairly functional. And with this size of aneurysm, the risk of rupture was exponential. As we can see from seminal studies really in Yale showing that in thoracal abdominal aneurysms, the risk of rupture above six centimeters is, is extremely high. Um, the risk of rupture in a 12 centimeter aneurysm, we can imagine would be almost 100% of the year. So the question is what was gonna kill her First, the severe COPD or this aneurysm, but you know, we thought about this long and hard and had the discussion with her and her, her um, wishes were to attempt to have this repaired. So with that, um, here's our CT imaging. As you can see, her massive pulmonary artery coming down. Um, you see her aneurysm and talking about volume of CT of aneurysms today, you can imagine what the volume of that aneurysm is. Um, it's a little fast, so I'm going to go back. However, the origin of her celiac artery appeared to be occluded. Her SMA was patent, as you can see again. Coming down to her celiac, it appeared to be occluded, and then her SMA was patent, and her renal arteries were patent, and distally um, access wasn't going to be an issue. So with that, here's a quick sagittal image that is showing the same thing, and the, the size of her pulmonary artery is very impressive. And at this time, she was uh, on high flow oxygen. She had normal renal function. She wasn't an obese lady, and she was fairly functional. And otherwise, her physical exam was otherwise unremarkable. So um, here you can see some measurements of her aneurysm and the extent on 3D reconstructions. And really, the extent of her distal aneurysm was right um, at her a little bit below her renal arteries. Um, again, some images and some measurements of her aneurysm showing that there's really a type 5 thoracoabdominal, which was below her six intercostal space, extending down to below her renals. So with her, you know, as we had this extensive discussion, what are our options? Our options are obviously open, but this patient, I don't know if anyone would disagree with me, would not tolerate an open operations. And with that, we have physician modified grafts or custom grafts, which we don't have um, access to. So our decision was to perform parallel stenting and laser fenestration of her renal arteries. Another concern of ours was would she tolerate endotracheal intubation and with pulmonary on board, um, they thought we could do this with a high flow or BiPAP. They had optimized her from a pulmonary standpoint and they were um, pretty ambitious that she would tolerate it under MAC and uh, local anesthesia and her, her risk of morbidity and mortality in this case was obviously exponential. However, we we proceeded to uh, perform this case. We decided to do an endovascular repair using uh, parallel stents and laser fenestration. We used bilateral common femoral axis and left brachial axis. Um, here are the first images we began by. We thought about doing this in a staged fashion, but we decided to do it in one day. So we performed, first we performed um, bilateral renal artery stents with a steerable sheath that was um, really un, uh, unremarkable that that went well and after that you can see her the bilateral renal artery stents going in here's the first one and the second one going in and you can see the aortogram um, and this should have been i should, should have showed this image later but that was part of the, of the laser fenestrations of her renal but after we got the renal stents in we perform first we um, deployed a cook alpha 
um, stent in her thoracic aorta. And then we um, got our wire down into the SMA. Distally, we deployed a uh, VBX stent. And then after that was deployed, we, with a balloon up, deployed a second 36 by 36 Medtronic stent um, to perform a snorkel in the parallel graphs and extended another VBX proximally into the SMA. As I said, her celiac was occluded, but, and we did demonstrate a, GD, uh, a collateral through our pancreatic or duodenal, um, ensuring that if we covered her celiac, she would have enough collaterals. So after we deployed the second med, the first Medtronic, but the second um, thoracic stent graft, um, this was when the time was to really um, work expeditiously. Um, even though we did mention to her that she was uh, at a high risk of going on dialysis after the case, so after that we performed our la laser fenestration of the renal arteries, and that was successful. However, we did have a large gutter leak. Um, we excluded a type 1A and a type 1B um, endo leak, um, but we did see this um, gutter leak. Um, so with the amount of fluoro time and the, the amount of time we had spent on this case, we decided to conclude it and fight another day. We got enough of a seal, but of course, uh, here are the one of the final images with the gutter leak shown here. Um, but of course, as any fellows Friday evening, as soon as she hit the ICU, she, does, she was complaining of abdominal pain, which was concerning for obviously some sort of um, SMA thrombosis, but that was patent. Her renals were patent. And ultimately, she did well, and I'm probably the only person today that's going to present a case that this patient actually expired over the weekend. But she, she did well for about two weeks and ultimately just continued to go, decompensating from her hypoxemia. So, um, you know, it's an interesting discussion to have. And what, what would you do differently in a patient with a 12 centimeter thoracoabdominal aneurysm? So in conclusion, I think parallel stent grafts, as you've read in the literature, have mixed results. Some report um, favorable midterm results. Obviously, the risk of morbidity and mortality is high. And I think, um, you know, I haven't done parallel stent grafting often, but I think it is an important uh, tool to have to treat patients with a, a complex aortic disease. Thank you.